Hello everyone, this is Dr. Juwan. In the short video, I'm going to answer a question that was emailed to me by a viewer, and that is, how does vitamin C help cardiovascular health? But before I answer that question, if you're new to my channel, thank you for tuning in and watching. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button down below and the bell notification, because when I upload videos like this, you'll be first to be notified. Facebook fans, I always appreciate growing audience. If you like what you see, hit the like button, and again, Facebook or YouTube people, if you like what you see, please share with a friend. I always appreciate growing an audience. And if you want to talk to me, for consultation, please hit the link down below. I'll be more than happy to spend 15 minutes with you to see if I could help you as well, and we could do it by phone or Zoom. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I got an email the other day, and that was in regards to how does vitamin C not only benefit the immune system, because we a lot of people already are aware of that, but how does it benefit cardiovascular health? Because this individual, he wants to do his best to get off blood pressure medications, stand medications, and just regain his overall health at the age of 60. Can it be done? Oh yes, it can be done. Okay, it's never too late to get into better health. You could be 20, you could be 60, you could be 80. It doesn't matter because the most important thing is you start now. Now, when it comes to vitamin C, vitamin C, ascorbic acid, we a lot of people are already familiar with the fact that it boosts the immune system, okay? But also, it helps with cardiovascular health and overall muscular health because not only is it an essential water-soluble vitamin with powerful antioxidant properties, so it's good for the immune, re immune response, but what it does to the other, to the blood, blood vessel, plays a role in the vascular bed in support of endothelial cells. What are endothelial cells? So when we have a blood vessel here, this is a cross section of a blood vessel, and imagine it to be like a pipe, a pipe that expands and contracts. Well, the pipe lining, that inner lining is called the endothelium. And the endothelium has different layers. The bottom layer is called the basement layer and so forth and so on. So when it comes to the blood vessels, the inner endothelial lining, collagen, which is supported by vitamin C, is needed for the function. In addition, it increased synthesis and deposition of type four collagen. Now collagen, we have an essential protein, collagen is essential protein, that is the building blocks of our body. Yeah, you have whey protein, egg protein, all this other protein, but now the hot protein is collagen. And this is what I recommend my patients to start taking daily. Even though they don't work out, I don't care if you don't work out. I care if you work out, of course, but I don't care if you're, it, that's, not a, that's not the issue. The issue is that collagen protein, now there's a lot of brands out there, so do your homework. Collagen protein is needed, why? because it helps the endothelial lining. It helps your body grow and repair because our body's made of two things, essential fatty acids and proteins. So it helps uh, the synth synthesis and deposition of type four collagen in the basement membrane. The basement membrane is that endothelial lining. In addition, it stimulates endothelial proliferation. It helps with the repair process of the, of the endothelial wall. In addition, it, inhib it inhibits apoptosis. Smooth muscle mediate vasodilation. Remember the pipeline, okay, for the smooth for your blood vessels. The blood vessels in the arterial system is under the autonomic control of the body. You're, so basically, when you're touching your nose, skeletal muscle tissue is is under voluntary voluntary control. While when the blood vessels are going through your system, that's under involuntary control. And the function, how, it, how it's moved, it's vasodilation and vasoconstriction, which is, plays an important part with vitamin C. Okay? So the thing is, is like, okay, what about the heart and the arteries? Arthrosclerosis, is that, is that cholesterol related? Because I know that from what I see on the TV and my primary doc, they all say, watch my cholesterol because it causes damage. The answer is no. Cholesterol is guilty by association. Vitamin C plays a role in preventing the endothelial dysfunction, which is the earliest sign of arthrosclerosis. What's arthrosclerosis? The hardening of the arter arterial wall. How does that happen? Vitamin C. Vitamin C deficiency. Now what happens is that, so you have the arterial wall here and it causes damage. And I'll get to that in a second. What, what causes the damage? So when it causes the damage, 
our body, cholesterol, which is actually our friend, the low density lipoproteins acts as the plaque formation, acts as the cover, it covers the hole. Then you have the HDL, which helps smooth it out and so it gets to be a smooth surface and your body always wants to recycle it. So what happens is when you have damage to the endothelial lining, you have, again, cholesterol is needed to patch up the hole, which forms a, which por which forms a protein plaque, which eventually creates the protein plug, which causes the narrowing of the arteries. Now, atherosclerosis is the hardening. What is important for, to prevent the hardening of the endothelial lining? And that's vitamin C. Okay, does that make sense? So the myth is that atherosclerosis is caused by cholesterol. It's actually not. The truth is, it's a structural weakness in the blood vessel wall. And, and cholesterol is just guilty by association. But what, but what happens with the heart disease factors? So when you're, when you're approaching that heart disease, what's the important factors? Well, what's going to happen? You have increased blood pressure. Why? Because the elasticity of the endothelial lining is less. Remember, smooth muscle mediate vasodilation. So in addition, your low, low density lipoproteins and also low HDL. But what's the culprit? Blood fat, your diet, your lifestyle. Increased triglycerides. What are triglycerides? Triglycerides is the amount of blood fat in your system. How do you get that? A couple different ways. One, you're to eat it. Ho-hos and ding-dongs. Also stress. Insulin. Insulin also creates high triglycerides. And again, that, what that, all that does, that depletes the absorption of vitamin C. What's vitamin C needed for? The endothelial lining. You see how that all kind of rolls together. So why are you deficient? Insulin resistant. Insulin resistant will cause a deficiency in vitamin C. Why? Because insulin helps with the absorption of vitamin C. And if you're eating too many carbohydrates or eating too much fat or it's too stressed out, you're going to be vitamin C deficient. In addition to hyperglycemia, vitamin C absorption is inhibited by hyperglycemia. In addition, eating habits. Are you on the standard American diet? Poor eating habits. Medication. Medication blocks the absorption of vitamin C. Smoking. Alcohol blocks the absorption of vitamin C. Your cells are, overall cells are, they need vitamin C. Why? because we have certain cells in our system called mitochondria, which your mitochondrial cells produce your energy currency called ATP. That mitochondria needs what? Vitamin C. So when you're stressed out, the cells are working overtime, so more vitamin C is needed for that cellular function, and then what happens? You get depleted. Then what happens to the blood vessel wall? It loses the elasticity. Heart disease. You see where vitamin C is phenomenal, not only for the immune system, but also for the heart. So what foods are high in vitamin C? Vegetables are typically high in vitamin C. However, the key vegetables that have the most vitamin C, bell peppers and, ve and vegetables, but mostly bell peppers. In addition, if you're gonna take supplementation, I always recommend, again, research your brands because people ask me what brand do I recommend. I cannot promote any brands on my channel. Okay, this is why I always say, if you see in the comments, do your research. And how much should you take? I always say minimal, it's dose dependent. You wanna split out two to 3,000 milligrams a day and you wanna split it, you know, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. You don't wanna take 3,000 milligrams all at once. You have extreme stomach pains and diarrhea. Okay, so I hope this helps. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. Vitamin C is phenomenal for cardiovascular health. Thank you for the email. If you have any other suggestions, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching. Be good.